Gaming has peaked in 1585. But I am going to change that in this Minecraft server with the mod pack called the Mods 3. And after the individual known as Gold Rusher 1 provided a server to run this monstrosity, I began the journey towards the final goal in the game. Which is basically becoming God itself. But starting off I am unaccompanied in an uninhabited expanse with no previous experience in all the Mods 3. And I will begin by analyzing every new object I find on the ground. This includes realistic small rocks and sticks. I was expecting them to drop regular commodities. But instead they gave rare resources that were supposed to only be obtainable later in the game. Apparently these small rocks were only supposed to give normal stone dust, but instead they give any item in the game that has dust in its name. After scrutinizing every distinct category of dust in this mod pack, I realized that this was already broken. I needed more small garden rocks. But how exactly do I optimize harvesting as many small rocks as possible? After doing some research on some of the mods on the server, I came up with a genius plan. First I set up headquarters in an area with multifarious natural resources. This included a tree that rapidly grew free plums for free. And materials for tools. But after mining in these overall acrimonious modded caves, I decided to create 14 portal blocks simply from common appurtenances, to open the portal to the mining dimension. Not only does it contain immeasurable small rocks, it also had a floating island that constantly had multitudinous slimes plummeting to their extinction. Which was the easiest slime of my extensive life. And I could use this slime, to make a slime sling and slime boots, which I could use to travel at nonsensical speeds. Meanwhile at the headquarters, I was setting up some thingies. I would need a storage system to accumulate all the different items I found. And what better way, than drawers. Compact, voluminous, and convenient to use. But why stop there? After gathering some basic resources I was now wealthy enough to create the drawer controller, when attached to a hopper and a drawer wall, anything in the hopper will be automatically sorted into whatever slot is available. And getting them out was still done by punching the drawers. Then I began working on the first signs of civilization. As my energy source I will be taking inspiration from society in the 1800s. Coal generators. By molding metal into machine parts simply with my hands, and creating sophisticated technology with only three different parts, I deposited a generator here and fueled it to make energy. Now for a leap in technology, all the way to the atomic disassembler. Which runs on energy instead of durability, and has different mining modes. Making this required various different machines. But they were all ridiculously effortless to get anyways. I could magically make machines out of seemingly unrelated and random objects. Anyways with all of this innovation out of the way, I could return to what I truly desired. Small rocks. In the mining dimension I began my 5 year economic plan. There were many random bushes which I could feast upon and allowed me to go for hours mining thousands of small rocks. Which gave more useful resources than actually mining in the caves in the mining dimension. The rocks gave diamonds, milk powder, sawdust, and your pearl dust, and other overly dramatic powder. After filling my inventory with riches, I returned to headquarters to drop everything into the hoppers to be automatically sorted into the now ridiculously large wall of storage drawers, which was basically the periodic table at this point. I had been mining rocks for what seemed like years. That was until one rock decided to nuke me with radioactive plutonium dust. In reality this was not dangerous at all but I realized that there was a Lilliputian chance that these rocks would drop free stuff that did irreversible devastation. So I returned to headquarters and put the plutonium somewhere, never to be seen again. While placing items in was still easy, finding what I needed was becoming disastrously exhausting. So I made a system which is basically just an item pipe and item filter going out of the controller. In the item filter I can drag whatever item I want to be inputted into this chest, with a 50% success rate. The fails are when the filter dumps every item from the storage wall into the chest. But when it succeeds, it takes one minute for the controller to find the item and put it in the chest. This was approximately the same customer service as McDonald's. 
And as if things couldn't get any worse, someone called Rainbow showed up at my base. So I decided to give him free stuff in return for doing stuff for free. His first task was mining all clay in a one mile radius. But why exactly do I need stupendous amounts of clay? Mining rocks had gotten addicting for me. Each rock was like opening a loot crate. And after I quit mining small rocks, I needed something to compensate for decreased dopamine levels. So I did some research. Scrap boxes have about 45 different possible endings. And making scrap boxes could be done by recycling any item from this 500 page list. This included matter balls, which can also be made by recycling any item or fluid from this 500 page list. This includes water. And the best way to get water was from kitchen sinks, which Rainbow was working on by destroying all clay humanly possible. The problem is I wanted to get 20 loot boxes per second. And according to my calculations, this needs 30 kitchen sinks, 15 ball makers, and 320 recyclers totaling to a simply incredible cost of thousands of machine parts. But that was easy. By gluing more modern day technology together with my bare hands, I created windmills and some energy cables. Unsurprisingly higher height means energetic or energy. So I made a precarious cable tower connected to a wall of floating windmills phasing through each other. And all of this is powering the gaming setup that will be used to make raw materials. Science has created the Digital Miner, which is basically an X-ray infinite reach machine that grabs any ore you specify in a radius. In the beginning I used this as a lawn mower by making a target all grass and small rocks in a one mile radius. But even I was a faster lawn mower than the X-ray infinite reach machine. So I decided to use it seriously and get some basic horse. Now for phase 2 of the plan. Analyzing every possible use for iron ore in machine recipes to determine the best way to process it. And after left clicking through hundreds of pages I found something that was swag. Which stood for systemized, W, fast, and giveaway. By dipping ores in oxygen to get rocks, crushing them, purifying them, and smelting them, I can get 3 ingots per hour. And oxygen comes from an electrolyzer being spoon fed with a water collector. So I dumped all the ores in the oxygen. After a while of doing other side tasks such as increasing civilization in the headquarters, I got all the metals I needed. What happened next are based on true scientific events. After hours of absolute gaming I have accomplished the possible. By utilizing the materials stored in the storage wall from mining thousands of small rocks, I was able to save a few hours whenever I needed something rare to make a randomly designed machine. Such as platinum or pyrethium or blah blah blah. Anyways in this unbearably loud jungle of machines, all the scrap was flowing into an automatic crafting table that was making loot boxes, which were all flowing into yet another unending periodic table of loot boxes. 
The last thing I needed to do was connect the third and fourth rows of recyclers to the loot box manufacturing area, which swarmed it with absolute loot box overload. Now all that was left to do was wait overnight for exceptional profit. Upon returning to the server, I discovered several tens of drawers filled to the brim with delicious loot crates, with each drawer holding 2,000. All of which amounts to 64,385 loot boxes. Now you might be wondering what exactly were inside these loot boxes. Using just water from the 15 kitchen sinks, the loot boxes will bless us with wooden tools, various pre-cooked meals, common resources, overall new paraphernalia, and super rare pro god constituents. So opening all these loot boxes will provide me with thousands of tools but also yummy resources beneath the garbage, equivalent to 5 US dollars in 1850. Opening the thousands of loot boxes would be easy. But dealing with the loot box aftermath was another engineering nightmare. First I would have to test opening just a few hundred loot bags, next to my third endless wall of storage drawers for the rewards which was obtained by destroying an entire forest including the one next to Rainbow's base. But apparently the main issue were the wooden tools. And using hoppers to collect them was eminently interminable. So I replaced them with four vacuum cleaners feeding into some controllers connected to the drawers. In reality I had no idea if this could handle my loot boxes. So there was only one way to find out. Thousands of items created were now splattering everywhere in planetary orbits around the vacuum hoppers, creating clouds of wooden tools waiting to be put into the drawer wall. This was not going so smoothly. But it was too late to turn back now. I spammed all my wooden tools into whatever drawer was free, but instead of holding 2000, they held only 32 since these were unstackable tools. This is so sad. After dealing with round one of loot box mayhem, I decided to go in harder. I began walking around while auto-clicking loot crates so that each vacuum would have a fair share of loot box cleanup to do. The server slowed down to rather precedented levels. And everyone else was starting to be majorly inconvenienced by the loot box unboxing. But the grind continues. That was until one of the server members visited my base and destroyed every item as it was being sorted into the great loot box reward wall leaving me in utter neutral emotion. I had been stopped so that the loot box lag would go away. It was not over yet though. Because I needed the resources from the tens of thousands of loot boxes to fund my future public works. So I began plans for the loot box reward collection system version 3.0. This new setup comes in three parts. Vacuums, overpowered item pipes, and black hole units that have infinite capacity for any item, which includes unstackable tools. After filling the black holes with one of each different reward as a way to filter them to only accept that item, I stress tested the loot box black hole with a measly 2000 loot boxes. This basically fired a laser of wood and tools and various resources which disappeared instantly into the vacuums and was sorted at the speed of light into the correct black hole. I considered this a gaming success. So I continued auto-clicking thousands of loot boxes. After going through tens of thousands of loot boxes it is time for the net worth reveal. I have obtained thousands of wood and tools which can be converted into useful wood byproducts. Several hundred metal powders. And for some reason I basically now had infinite food. Therefore I was now affluent enough to commence phase 2 of my plan. Using all my newfound resources, to put my base inside a nuclear reactor. 
Remember to like and subscribe and notification bell and comment the video. And special thanks to the channel members because we got a Googleplex new members from the Space Civilization incident.